Rolling? Thank you. So uh, you're going to talk to me. I'll ask you the questions. But just if you would, please just talk to the camera. Tell them your name and where you're from, just so we have a record of that. Uh, David Bagley, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. OK. All right. Thank you. Would you like me to call you Mayor Bailey or David? I'd rather not. <laughs> you want to I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to dog call at 3 a.m. OK. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you some general questions at first, um, and then I have some more specific just for you, OK? OK. OK. Uh, David, where's Billy the Kid buried? He's buried in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Uh, nearby? About 65 feet from here. How do you know that? Well, uh, because that's what I heard all my life. Uh, my dad told me something when I was mayor, when, it, when the controversy started. And he said, it's funny, they waited for all the witnesses to die before they started this controversy. And when he, my dad was a child or a young man, he uh, maybe in his 20s or 30s talked to people that uh, knew Billy that were here at that time. And I guess they were at the, uh, down here living at the old fort because this was the community in 19. In 1881, this was Fort Sumner. It wasn't up in town where we see it now. And those people lived down here, and they told my dad that what they knew, and there wasn't any question about it. So if that's the case, he's buried there, we know he's there, how come no one's ever dug up the grave to conclusively prove it? Well, you don't know what you're going to dig up in the cemetery. Uh, I understood, I really don't have any first-hand knowledge. I was not here in 1881. I was not here in 1905, uh, I believe it was, when a, a flood moved the tombstone. And some old-timers at that time, I understood, uh, put the tombstone back to where they thought it should go from, from some landmarks that they had. And uh, so, you know, you might dig up Billy and you might dig up somebody else. But the last time they buried anybody, they dug up several people before, or several graves before they found a grave that was not occupied, so. Was um, that uh, Chano Silva? I guess it was. I heard that story too. All I have is a hearsay, you might say. Understood. <laughs> Um, is it at all possible, uh, this is total speculation, but from the time Billy was buried and we were kind of in the middle of nowhere until now, is it possible that somebody else has already dug up the grave at any point in, in the last 140 years? I guess anything's possible. Do you have any, was there ever, ever any stories along those lines? Where this is the first it? time I heard a story like that. I think I know the answer. But I gotta ask you anyway, what are the chances? Give me zero to 100% that Billy somehow escaped from Fort Sumner that night and went on to live as somebody else. Well, I guess we're not 99, we're not 100% sure of anything in life. So I can't say it's 100%. Having been born and raised here, what does Billy the Kid mean to Fort Sumner? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, it has given Fort Sumner name recognition. And that's probably maybe the, the biggest thing that came out of Billy is that people recognize Fort Sumner, uh, we travel a lot, and uh, a lot of times they'll say, where are you from? And uh, you, uh, more than half the people know, uh, and it's because of people like you that gets it on the air. It's probably not from them reading their history books, but uh, know about Billy. So I think name recognition is probably the long, in the long run, the, 
more than economics. In Fort Sumner with the people that you know and con come in contact with, is Billy thought of as a hero, as an outlaw, as a Robin Hood? What's the prevailing sentiment toward him? Well, today, you know, I don't know, I hadn't thought about it. In, in those days, well, he was respected by the people that lived here, maybe for his ability to be an outlaw, but he, he was known and respected in those days. Uh, now, I don't know, I couldn't tell you about now, how people think about him. I mean, I've just grew up with him. Understood. I mean, you don't have to put this on the air, but we'd get pretty drunk and go out <laughs> and visit the grave, you know, in high school. <laughs> but uh, we didn't think about him being, oh, he was just a, a gunslinger. Maybe we may have thought him more of a, a gunslinger than an outlaw you know, or a hero or not. Uh, and it's how you view these county wars that were going on in the 1880s. There was the Jackson County War in uh, Wyoming. And this war, it's probably uh, how you want to view it at that time. Uh, and it's the, the Civil War, if you view it in the, the North, uh, from the North point of view, or if you go to Natchez, Mississippi, you're gonna get another view of the Civil War. The, the victors write the history books. They do all too often, you're right. Right, so, you know, uh, Billy may not have been, uh, he may have killed 21 people, but in those days, it was a different time frame than it is now. People thought differently. They didn't like killings, but that's what you did if you were not gonna die, you might kill somebody. So it's hard, you know, we go back and, and this is all maybe not something you need, but we go back and we wanna re-judge what's happened in the past in today's uh, and currently the current things going on in the nation. You can see it. By today's standards. By today, we wanna judge everything by today's standards. and. And right now we're, you know, the BLM and all of that. We're trying to judge what happened in the past by today's standards. So it's hard for us. We weren't living in the 1881 period. So uh, the history book has so far has written it the way we want to understand it now. It's written it for us. So we believe what was written to be somewhat truthful. But if we lived at that time, we might not agree with what was written about that time because we'd have first-hand knowledge. I don't have any first-hand knowledge. Nor do I. <laughs> what would you say to the people that believe either Brushy Bill Roberts or John Miller was actually Billy the Kid? Well, economically, it's helped Heiko. And uh, uh, I was told, you know, in, uh, during that period uh, that it all started, and you may know the year, it was during the, between 86 and 94 at some point. I'd say around 1990 it got stirred up. And uh, one of the residents of Heiko says, don't worry about this, the notoriety is gonna help everybody. And I think it probably did. Is that a good thing? From an economic point of view, yes. Billy uh, would have been killed almost 140 years ago. Mm -hmm. Why are people still fascinated with him? Well, he was quite a hero, I guess, to last that long, or a villain. He's more popular in uh, Europe than he is here. The Germans and the British both are fascinated by Billy. Okay. Going to move on to some questions that are specifically for you, um, and if you if you don't know the answers, you can't you know come up with an answer that's fine. Just tell me. I can't make up a lie or something. Quick. Well, you can. But yeah, I mean, you, you can say whatever you want, but but if you don't want to do that, then you can just pass. Um, what do you believe the as as a former mayor? What do you believe the economic impact on the village was or is? from having Billy's grave here? 
there's no doubt that uh, he has provided economic return to the village, at least since uh, he got popular, say after World War II. I'm not sure people traveled here before World War II to see Billy, and I'm not sure, sure how many people actually drought, drive to Fort Sumner just to see Billy. But if they're driving down the highway and, oh, we can go see Billy's grave, they run down here and they check it out. They might spend a little money while they're in town. Many of them just drive down. If they leave any money, it's the coins on the grave, and then they leave town. Is there something that the village could do to better uh, capture those tourism dollars? Probably we could sell him more than we, we probably undersold him the whole period of time. I feel like we probably have. I don't know how to sell him more, but we probably undersold ourselves. Do you, in your opinion, has Heiko done a better job of selling brushy Bill Roberts than Fort Sumner has at selling Billy the Kid? Well, I guess if you have nothing and then you have something, you've had a 100% increase. We've got something and we still have something, so I don't know. I just, you know, uh, yeah, I think Heiko probably, uh, it was that they probably have maybe, well, I don't know. I have not heard anything from Heiko uh, directly other than I'll have people come in the store and say, is Billy, where is Billy buried? And uh, of course, I know what I believe and I, I believe that to be true. I didn't make, I did not make up the Billy's uh, death and burial in Fort Sumner. Uh, so, so going back to your question was, what was your question? Well, what, was, what do you think the impact is on Heiko? But you gave me a, oh, a great quote. Uh, oh, well, it probably, I haven't been to Heiko. And I, uh, when, when they started it, um, there were a couple of people that came down here. I don't know what they did to promote it, and I don't know what's happened. I really don't know what at Heiko what they have done, other than they do have uh, ma the movies, uh, Young Gun 2, it may have done more than Heiko did to uh, put a seed of, uh, in people's mind that something other than what happened to Billy could have happened. And, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Emilio Estevez was in Heiko. He played Billy in the Young Guns movies. Mm -hmm. uh, he was there last fall for a week doing research for a movie about brushy Bill Roberts, is what I've told by <laughs> one of my sources. So he, he believes the story, I think. Um, okay. Uh, do you think that there's any chance that the village would ever allow the grave to be exhumed, DNA testing to be done? Do you think there's any chance that that would ever happen here? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not in. I'm not in the power. Uh, well, like Judge he Judge Hefner, I think his name was. I reluctant to say his name, but that's the name that comes to mind. From Heiko said to me, he said, "Controversy is good." So I don't know if the village would want to do that or not, I really, I, I probably wouldn't if I was mayor. I mean, because for one thing, it's gonna be hard uh, to determine who you dug up is Billy for sure. Mm -hmm. He may be buried under one of those three slabs. He may be buried under the fence and he may be five feet to the east for mm -hmm. all I know. I do not know for sure where he's buried. Gotcha because I think that tombstone was moved by floodwaters two times. I believe that's what I heard. Got it. And at least once, 1905. So back in 2003, you, you were not mayor anymore. Um, mayor, I'm sorry, let me start that again. Uh, mayor Lopez uh, mm -hmm. was uh, on the job. 
but in 2003 is when things really erupted, where the two deputies from Lincoln County, uh, Sullivan and Cedarwall, wanted to launch an investigation. They wanted to dig up here. They had the governor on their side, um, Governor Richardson. And uh, do, you do you remember that, that time of that case? I do. Not my, I really don't remember anything specifically. What you've told me, I, yes, I do kind of remember that. But. Gotcha. Um, do you remember the prevailing sentiment in the village at that time? Because it seemed, initially, there's a letter from, hang on. There's a letter from Mayor Lopez that he handed, this is a copy of it, he handed to Steve Cedarwall, which essentially said, we think this is a good deal. And this was going to go to Governor Richardson. Um, and so it seemed like the village was on board at first. Uh, do you remember that sentiment going around? I don't remember really much about it, to gotcha. be honest with you. It's Fair been enough. too, too long. In the, uh, when, when you're the mayor of Fort Sumner, I mean, you have a lot of responsibilities. How much of your thinking goes into Billy the Kid and tourism? Like, is it, a, is it a tiny part of your responsibilities or is it a big part? It would probably be a tiny part. Uh, now, when the Bushy Bill thing got kind of stirred up, we kind of did react and we did a spoof on it where we buried uh, Davy Crockett out here, trying to get, uh, we were trying to get uh, the governor of Texas to run a foot race against our governor out of it, but of course it didn't go anywhere. And Joe Bolden was in this building at that time and they started the Billy the Kid Outlaw Gang as a response to that. And, uh, we did a little bit of stuff there, but really, uh, overall, eight years, Billy the Kid probably wasn't even 1% of what I did, right? You uh, just mentioned, uh, you know, kind of fake burial of Davy Crockett. Was that to take a Texas legend and say, hey, we've yeah. got him? Like a right. tit, tit for tat? Well, the spoof was that Davy was so upset about Texas telling a lie that he got up and moved to New Mexico. <laughs> That's pretty good. I had the footage and I gave it to a friend of mine. I didn't get it back. Gosh, I'd love to see that. Yeah. That's great. Uh, let's see. Back in, you, I know you said you don't have a lot of recollection. Back in 2003, um, when that all started to come together with Mayor Lopez, did you have any feelings? Was it even on your radar at that point that this is a good idea, bad idea, I couldn't care less. Because the governor was definitely on board, at least initially. Mm -hmm. No, I really can't react to that. I really don't remember much about it. Gotcha. I'd okay. have to make up something. Yeah, we don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, I think you've answered this, but, but I'm gonna ask you again directly. Under any circumstances, as a, just as a resident of Fort Sumner, longtime resident, mm -hmm. your family's got a history here, would you support the, the digging up the cemetery, doing DNA tests, and trying to figure out if Billy is actually there? I'd probably say I wouldn't support it because I don't think it, uh, it would be a, there would be a definite answer that would come out of it. I think it would just be more, uh, more unknowns because you wouldn't know exactly if you dug up Billy. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't think anything, it, I don't think it would decide anything in the long run. Gotcha. Okay. I have one more thing. Um, do, you, do you know, uh, I think you do, Sheriff Graves, or former Sheriff Graves, I guess, right? I know him when he lived here, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's, there's a quote attributed to you. Oh. Um, I don't know if you know this. Have you, this is a, co it's a bad copy, so I apologize. But this is a letter that Sheriff Graves wrote mm -hmm. um, that I think was supposed to be delivered to Governor Richardson um, based on the Billy the Kid investigation. Have you ever seen this? Not that I know of. Uh -uh. um, I'm going to read you a little bit, and I'd okay. just like to get your reaction. 
Uh, on or about June 17, 2003, Sheriff Gary W. Graves met with ex-mayor David Bailey at Dave's Grocery Store. Um, do you remember any sort of meeting with him no, at the I grocery store? No, I don't remember that. Of course, why would I? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Uh, David Bailey advised Sheriff Graves that he should discontinue any and all investigations concerning Billy the Kid or Billy the Kid's grave. And that if the grave of Billy the Kid was to be exhumed, that Sheriff Graves had no idea what he would find, but that Bailey knew what would be found. Any recollection of no, this? No, I have no idea is, what. Is this like fabrication? I mean, this is the first I've heard it. Really? Uh, and you know, uh, if Graves came and talked to me at that time, uh, I sure don't remember it now. And I might have been uh, doing something other than focusing on what he asked me, not realizing that he might be putting something down on paper as a result of it. I don't, re but I don't remember um, anything about that. Okay, I just want to read this last mm -hmm. little bit here. Uh, uh, Graves advised he did not want the exhumation, but did wish to disprove the claims of Brushy Bill Roberts uh, and John Miller. Um, Bailey then stated, you do not know what you are going to find, but I do. Let me read that last part again. To, to, Bailey then stated, you do not know what you're going to find, but I do. I Is don't there, know what. <laughs> I'm going to give this what, to you. Why would, I don't know why I would know what he was going to find. I would have never known what he was going to find. So I mean, this I, mean, I have not dug the grave up to see who's in there. I don't know what in the world he was thinking about. Was there any sort of uh, like friction between you two that would cause him this this no, uh, I, this was actually published in a book that or in a book that was recently published. No kidding. Yes. No, I no, I I I knew the guy. I mean, it's a small town, you know everybody. And um uh, I knew him, and he, if he came in and talked to me about Billy, I don't remember it. And I may have made off-the-cuff remarks, jokingly even possibly, you know. That may have been a, a joke, you know. I just don't know. I have no idea how. Uh, I can't imagine uh, that I would say something like, I know what you're going to find, because I sure don't know what you're going to find, because we don't know what we're going to find mm -hmm. in there until you dig it up. Yeah, so submitted. Uh, you, I don't think you can come to any conclusion if you do dig it up. I don't, you know. I think you're right. Uh, Gary Graves Sheriff, July 20th, 2003. Would you like this? Would, would you like to? Oh, you can yeah. have it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I read it and, uh, and I thought that's a, uh, that's pretty interesting that yeah. there would be this thing. Neither of you, I think, had the authority at that point to stop or, or allow the investigation well, to continue. in 2003, I had no authority. Right. I don't know why. And if he had asked me something, I probably would have been laughing it off at that point mm -hmm. because I was out and not planning on coming back. Yeah. If I, uh, is, do you even know if, is Sheriff, ex-Sheriff Graves still alive? I don't even know, I haven't followed up. Uh, as far as I know he is, I haven't heard anything to the contrary. If I were to ask him about this, because I would like to know, I mean, it seems like a, you have no recollection of it. I don't have, you're right. So what do you think he would say? Well, surely he would say, oh yeah, I mean, he's, he doesn't want to, if he, if he wrote this, uh, then he probably believes it's here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's his. Right. I mean, that it's true if he wrote it. Just like if I had written something in uh, real time, I might believe in the future that I believe what was on the paper to be true. Uh, I just don't remember it. And, I, and if I made uh, some kind of uh, remark jokingly to him and he wrote it down or 
saying something sarcastic, you know, and he wrote it down. Uh, like I said, the victors write the history books, so mm. I just don't know. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add about Fort Sumner, Billy's his grave, anything else that we should know that would be pertinent? Billy's grave? Uh, yeah. About anything, yeah. Billy the Kid? No, it's just the only thing I really had when you called me the other day or uh, texted me was what my dad had told me. That's really the only information I have that uh, sometimes uh, on TV, the Discovery Channel, they run out of facts, so then they have to start saying, well, what if? this was true and uh, maybe this happened and uh, it sells advertising time it's, and it's good, the controversy is good for them at the time. Uh, but uh, like I said, what my dad is really all I had, that my direct knowledge is what my dad told me that there was never a question about it for until all the witnesses were they didn't go on. Do you think that, or did your dad think that that was on purpose, like somebody that... No, he was, uh, my dad had a sense of humor. That oh, was a joke. Got it. But it was a joke with something, some meat in it. Mm -hmm. Based on truth, yeah. Yeah, based on truth. Uh-huh. Right, no, he... Gotcha. Thank you so much, okay. David. I really appreciate you coming mm -hmm. down today. That was great. And mm -hmm. uh, really filled things in. If I get any uh, quote from Graves, I'll let you know. Okay. You said, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was in a book. Um, I, I don't know that you ever met, do you no. know a guy named Steve Cedarwall? I've heard that. I've heard the name. He was one of the Lincoln County deputies that was part of this. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Big tall guy. He, that's he, that, uh, I, that, that I remember the name. And he got sued into oblivion, but in any event, he got what, sued? sued into oblivion by uh, an author named Gail Cooper, who ultimately got this thing all put to a stop. Um, and, and that's when the governor yeah. backed out. I didn't know anything about that. Yeah. But uh, his book is called, oh shoot, <laughs> I'll, I'll text you the title, but that's where mm -hmm. I got that from, from his book, which was published, I think, just in the last few months. So. It came across my radar. I read it and thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. So Yeah, it is. Uh, it is interesting for me. Yeah. And I don't know what the spirit of that conversation was, and I don't know why at that point he would have been talking to me. In 2003, I was not the mayor. Uh, Johnny Macmillan, Will Raymond was mayor at that time. Mm -hmm. Raymond Lopez yes, was mayor who had been my mayor pro tem for eight years. And then uh, Johnny Macmillan went in. He worked for me, for the village. He went in for four. And then Raymond went in for eight. Uh, if they asked you to come back and be mayor again, would you do it? No, probably not. You've hesitated. No, well, I just have to think about everything I've said. <laughs> uh, no, I put my, my eight years in and uh, you know, the mayor here is the city manager. He's the personnel manager. Mm -hmm. He's everything. Okay. He may be the dog catcher. Yep. He may be out uh, plugging a water line at 2 a.m. too. Mm -hmm. and so I'm too old to do that. Not an easy job. I'm too old to run for president too. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Based on this, I'll vote for you. I'll vote. You, you got my vote. That's one. You vote for yourself. We got two. We got around the world. Right. <laughs> David, thank you so much for coming in. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. And uh, we will. We've got. I got your uh, you know, your messenger, but Lloyd has your email address, and when it'll be next year before this is all done and out. Okay. We'll let you know. Okay. Watch well, yourself. Thank you so much. Now that he turned. <laughs>